So here's where we're at now. We've got the majority of the rough forging done. It's still a little warm. We've been to lunch, we've come back. Um, like I said, we've got the majority of the rough forging done. If you look, uh, we've got the beak, the head, got the neck squared up to about between three quarter and one inch square. We've got the chest and the belly uh, isolated with a fuller groove in the middle between the two. And then we've got the tail feathers isolated. And the main thing you need to remember is the beak you forward from the top, the neck you forward from the top, and the sides, not the bottom, it's the sides, and the top. Once you get those, then you roll it over 180 degrees, and then you do, you uh, use your inch and a half forward to isolate the mask between your, your chest and your belly, and then while it's still facing up, with your, with your beak and everything facing down, you isolate the, the mass for your tail feathers. So all you got to remember is, the first two are on top, so top, top, and then bottom, bottom. Okay? Now, what we're going to do next, is we're going to start carving the face. This is the fun part. So, if you notice on this, if you look, we're straight across here. Just completely straight across. Now, if you look at any of our buzzards here, they angle. So how we do that is, is we take our forward One of, our, one of our hand fullers, and that's about a, probably a 3 8 radius, maybe. And we're going to, like right now this is straight across. So what we're going to do now, we're going to come in here, and we're going to drive down from the sides to get that angle on both sides. We start Facing in toward the beak a little bit and work our way out. Same way here. <clears throat> we try to get that fairly even across there. Once we get that fairly even, an angle we want, then we take the side set, we set it here, and we hit it, walk it across there to even that out and get rid of the ridges. Same thing here. We put it there and we walk it backward and we flatten that out. That gives us that gives us our angles right here with a little flat spot in the center, and it also starts to push that back, so that we've got some some uh, starts giving some definition to the eyes, okay, where the eyes are going to be. Once we do that, then we heat it back up, and I don't worry about how many heats this takes, okay? I'm not I'm not a heat person, I, you know. I'm not going to tell you I can do this in two heats. You'll very seldom hear me mention how many heats. Okay? Once I do that, then I take, and I've got three ball punches here. I take the smallest ball punch, and I locate the center of the eyeball. And I start by driving down toward the, the beak the center, this way and this way, okay, and I locate it about the center of that, those two uh, inclines we just made. Now is the time to make sure your eyeballs are, are centered too, if that's what you want. Once you get the, first, the, the eye, eyeballs located where you want, you go to the next ball punch. This time, you kind of lean her up and you start driving down, lean her up and kind of start driving down. 
an end file, you go to your third one, you go up here, and you drive in, down and in, just like you did the first, first two. And then you kind of come in a little bit more, and you drive down, and that pushes this eyeball. If you look at it, that pushes those eyeballs back. Gives you this definition if you can see it here on the back side. It gives you a nice hump on there. Now once you do that, you have numerous ways you can do this. Uh, now on this one what I did was I took an eye punch, a round eye punch, with the depression in the center, and I drove it down in there, like that and like that. And then once I drove that down in there, I took just a, a regular center punch, a long handled center punch, and I made sure I was in the middle of those eyeballs, and I drove down, and I think it gave some really nice, some really nice uh, eyes. I also have, here I have a, I have a square chisel with a, with, with, a, with a point drove down in the center of it that I used on, let's see, I used that on here to give it a different effect. And you know, it just depends on what kind of eye punches and eye, eye chisels you've got and what you want to do. This is where you can play. Then, once I have that, and I've got the eyes, if you'll notice, right here, let's see, I think they all three have it. One shape or one, one form or another, yeah. I always like to put some kind of depression between the two eyeballs, just to define the eyes. Whether it's just a little bit up here like this one, or whether it's a deep one, or whether it's two that go this way, like on this one, okay? But that just separates the two eyes. Once I do that, then I have this small radius chisel. And what I do with that is I come up here, and usually pretty well, even with the eyeballs, and centered on that depression I just made between the eyeballs, I put it there, and I put it there, Drive straight down to make looks like nostrils on the bait. Then the last thing I do is I heat it up and I come back behind the, the eyeballs and I put a chisel there and I drive down, kind of walk it back and forth, and then I go back. You have to go back about about a, a half an inch. Because if you get too close, it'll just it'll just shear right into the chisel mark you just made. So you come back about half an inch and you drive another one. You can even go like three of them if you want. It's up to you what you want. But that gives you some definition behind the eyes. Okay? And that's pretty much carving. Now you can you can come up here, I think, uh, yeah, on this one, I took and, and punched a little bit into the ring around the Round the eye. Um, this one I came up on top and drove down to give them kind of a worried look. You know, you can play with expressions all you want. That's, that's the fun part about these. You can just about do anything you want. Um, play around with them. You know, experiment. Um, that's what they're there for. So that's how we're going to carve the face. So that's what we're going to do next, and we're going to heat it up and we're going to start carving the, the head and all of it. I'll focus the camera over there on the, on the vise, uh, so you'll be able to see what we're, going to, what we're doing.
Okay, so we're going to start with the hand fuller. Uh, it's a 3 8 uh, hand fuller. Um, we're going to work on those bevels where the eyes go. So that's what we're doing right now. the uh, bevels completed so we just checked to make sure they were even and there's a shot of the, the two bevels next step we'll be using the, uh, the side set to even those bevels out and to get them even so that's what we're doing right now Takes a little bit of doing. Now we're going to get back and look and make sure they're even. And if we're even, we'll be happy with them. So there's a shot of it with the with the bevels and see how it pushed the eyebrows back. That's what look we were looking for. So now that we have the bevels done, completed, uh, we take our first small ball punch and we locate the eyes on both sides. We want to make sure we've got them centered. Once we have the eyes located and we know where we want to be, we start driving that punch down in there. Back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to drive one all the way without the other. You go back and forth and try to keep them even as you can. Okay. And there's the start of the eyeballs. We're going to start with our middle size ball punch. Uh, and we're going to drive down. We start driving more or less straight down and then we kind of work toward the outside. Uh, once again we go from one side to the other uh, trying to make a match. Back and forth. Now we're going to start driving them and we had to cool my hand. That's what I was doing. I was cooling my hand there. I don't like wearing gloves, so I dip my hand in the uh, quench bucket from time to time when my hand starts getting hot. So now we're working on driving those eye, uh, over those eye sockets open, uh, giving them some definition. That's what we're doing right now. Now, if you notice, we're coming from farther from the bottom and working our way forward to the top of the eyeball. We're raising those eyebrows right now is what we're doing. Of course, all you can see right now is my back. But basically, we're raising those eyebrows. Now, we're taking a look to make sure they're even. And they're even. So we're going to take it out. We're going to take a look at it. See how they're raised up? You can really start seeing the eyeballs now. back in the fire.
Now we're going to go to the biggest ball punch that we've got. It's about a 5 8 half inch to 5 8 ball punch. Not quite three quarter, I don't believe. We're going to drive that down in there and open those sockets up for our first eye punch. So we're driving them down in there and we're just going to make sure that they're even. Now we're going to take a look at them. Touch up this one just a little bit. Now we're happy that those are even. Now we're going to get our eye punch and apparently we dropped it on the floor. So we'll pick it up. And we'll drive that eye punch down in there. Set it down in there good and hard. It's getting cold so we're going to have to put it back in the fire. So we're going to go back with our big eye, uh, eye punch and now we're going to come to this side and we're going to set it down good and hard, trying to get it to match the other side. Now we're going to go back to the other side, work it a little bit more. Gonna cool her hand again. Her hand got warm. There we go. Now you notice we changed the angle. If you could just see that, we changed the angle a little bit. Now, there's the there's the eyeballs with the eye first eye punch back in the fire. So now we're going to take our small eye punch, I guess you call it a people punch. Uh, it's kind of a triangular shape. Uh, we decided to go with it instead of the one with, the, uh, with just the center punch mark. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to index it right now. Kind of looking at it to make up my mind. So we drive that down in. Now we're going to the side, we center it again. Drive it down in, see where we're at. We'll get the two of them, make sure they're even. Drive it down in again, come over this side, same thing. Look at them, make sure they're even, and we're happy with them. So, now. We've got our fuller and we're starting our depression right down between the eyes, giving it some definition, giving him some more facial expression. Drive that, that down that drive that down in there good. Like I said, this is where you get a chance to be creative. This is this is the fun part. No use getting in any hurry. Take your time and enjoy it. Okay, so we're happy with it. Okay, I think we're taking a... On the flat part between the eyes, we're making little indentations on the flat part between the eyes right there. That's what we just did, if I remember correctly. So now we're going to take our radius chisel, our big radius chisel, and we're going to work the area behind the eyebrows, uh, put creases in there, uh, notice working back and forth, 
Doing the one on the other side now. Trying to make them even back and forth, rock them back and forth. Take a look at them. Now we're going to put the second one behind the first one. Now remember, you have to come back farther than you think, or you'll end up just uh, cutting into the first one. So there we are. We're happy with that. There they are. Let's see if you can see them. There you go. Now you can see them. So now we're going to take our small radius punch and we're going to line up with the with the uh, eyebrows and the flat spot between the eyes and we're going to put the nostrils in with the radius punch. Uh, not the best view in the world, uh, but that's what we're doing. Just going to make sure they're even. Check them both. Happy with them, so there we are. Now, there's the nostrils. I think you can see them. Yep, there's the nostrils right there. So now we've pretty much got the head carved. Uh, the facial expressions and everything carved. So what we're going to do now is we're going to heat up the neck and we're going to take the neck and we're going to uh, start flooring it and rounding it down and drawing it out to about three eighths to half inch round. That's what we're going to do now. got our neck drawn down, we've got our beak, we've got our face, we've got everything except tail feathers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this loose from the parent stock and then we're going to finish forging the tail feathers and getting them ready to finish. But first let's see See how much extra bar we had here. We started out with 15, and actually, I've got right at two and three quarters bar left. Uh, so it, anyway, somewhere in that 12 to, to 14 range. Uh, actually, I gave myself an extra inch, and I ended up with almost an extra three inches. It all depends on how long you make your beak, how long you make your neck, you know, your body. I always like to have, well, I'd rather have a little too much than not have enough. So, we're going to take this, we're going to cool it, and we're going to cut that, cut the tail feathers loose from the, from the, the bar stock, and then we're going to put it in the, in the forge, and we're going to uh, taper down the feathers in both planes, the tail feathers, and uh, 
get ready to, uh, to finish it. Well, we're back. Let's uh, let's kind of do a quick run through of where we're at. We've got our got our buzzard, all the uh, forging done, basically. Uh, got the beak, got the head, we've got the neck, we've got the chest, we've got the depression between that, we've got the belly, and we've got the tail feathers, all right there. So. Uh, that's what I figured most people wanted to see was, was the, the, the main forging and how to forge it. Uh, I, uh, I use power hammers, of course. Uh, it can be done by hand. Uh, I'd want some pretty beefy st strikers, but it can be done by hand. So anyway, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about finishing the buzzard. Uh, and the... The order in which to do that, in my opinion, okay. So, the first thing I normally do is I forge the toes. Now, this is 5 16 rod. It's got a, I just full replace in it. I think it's about every inch, every inch and a half or so. Uh, roughly, they're five inches long. On the end, I take and I forge it. If you can see that, I forge a claw and turn it downward. And it takes six of those. And I start with them all pretty much the same, the same length. Like I said, I believe they're about five inches, I think. Yeah, right at five inches long. So I take those, and I take, after I get all six of them forged, then I take three of them, I set them over here, and I set three over here. And then I take the two on the outside of the three, and I cut about a half inch off of them, so they're a little shorter. If you'll notice, if you look at this guy here, get him down there, you'll notice that these two and these two are shorter than these two. Just the way I like them. So I cut them a little shorter, about a half inch shorter, and then I just take them with them sticking out and I take them and I weld them. I start here, point this one this way, I start far over here, point that one that way, I tack them and then I fit the other four in there with the long ones here and here and I tack them. Just like that, with the, with the claw facing down, right up against this step. And then after I do that, from the back, from the top, I run a bead off here. You can see it here. I run a bead off here, up to here, on each one of them. So it kind of, kind of connects them, if you can see that. Right in there. 
and that gives me my toes. That way it'll sit up. Now, the next thing I do after I get my toes on, now you got a buzzer that's standing up straight. Okay, you're standing up. So the next thing I do is I come up and I don't measure. Whatever looks good, I come up and I don't know what they call that right there. But anyway, I take and I lay a, a, a bead around there and I lay it just, you know, a little bit after a little bit after a little. Build it up right there, looks to me to be about, about three eighths of an inch out all the way around, proud of the neck. Okay. Like I said, I don't have I don't have a set measurement, just whatever I think is gonna look good. Okay. So once I get that done, then I stick it in the vise with the tail feather right there. And I heat it up and I bend it however I want. I usually like to come up kind of like a P-trap, a reverse P-trap, and come around, and I bend that. You'll notice this one, that ring neck or whatever you want to call it there, the neck ring or whatever, is down here. You'll notice on this one, it's in the middle of the bend. Just something different. Okay, I always try to do a little, something a little different on each one of them. But I, I just take that and I start heating it with a torch, and I bend it, and that gives me my my neck. Once I start doing that, once I get that done, and I've got the head facing down, then I take, I just start running beads on the front, down to the toes, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Okay, <clears throat> experiment a little bit. The faster you go, the narrower your bead. The slower you go, the wider your bead is, and and, and it's. It, I like going fairly fast. Okay, and I do that all the way around, all the way around, clear to, the, to where the tail feathers start. Don't go past where the tail feathers start, but stop right there about level with the toes, is when, you, when you're running down on the, on the back. And you cover the whole thing all the way around, 360 degrees, whatever you think looks nice, but that'll give you the texture you want. Just keep overlaying them. Okay? Now it gives you this texture. Then, this, these, the wings are forged from quarter by inch and a half flat bar. Okay, and I just, I can't tell you the length, I just make a taper. See if you can see this button down here. I make a taper. And then once I get the taper made, I set it on the horny anvil and I bend it down. Okay? Now, this is where you need to pay attention. You make two of those. And then, you cup them. Up here at the top so they fit the shoulders of the buzzer. See if we can get that to where you can see it. That fits the shoulder of the buzzard. Now when you cut that, you want to lay those so that they're pointing in toward each other and then cut them. Because if you cut them on the same side, when you go to put them on the buzzard, they're not going to be right. Once you get those forged, I come up from that taper seven and a quarter inches and I cut it off. Now, I stick it in the vise and I take the first one with the crook in the tail, crook in the bottom of the, of the wing going that way. And I set it on there. And I bring it about a half inch up from this shoulder. I bring it up a little higher. 
about a half inch up from that shoulder. And I weld it. And after I get it welded in place, then I take and I run down here with the welds and blend them in and I build this up along this ridge a little bit too to get a little higher and so it's not just a, a flat uh, piece of metal. Once you get that one, I always like to heat it up a little bit and push that down. And then we have that one. Do the same thing. Now you can do this one of two ways. Uh, you can take that before you put the wings on and you could take a sharpie, clean this up a little bit with a flap wheel, take your sharpie, draw down, go right down the center of it. relatively center and then come off of it two, three, four, however many you want. I'm just going to go three with this one. Just like you were veining a leaf and then a little notch here. Then I take a four and a half inch grinder with a cutoff wheel I follow that. Just like this. Once I do that, then I come back up and I cut little V-notches for, for feathers, and then I take and I clean those corners up. Okay, and I take a flat disc and I knock the sharp edges off and round everything up so nothing catches. And that's how I do the tail feathers. Uh, if you if you uh, you can do that first before you put the wings on. Uh, if you do it after you put the wings on, then you you're going to have to fold the wings out of the way to get to it. Then the wings, once you put the wings on there, you take it just like you did the body. And first thing I do is I run straight down into into the crook of the wing, just like this with beads, including the the front corner here. Same way over here. Okay. Once I've got that, then I start with the second layer and I curve them in like this to kind of match the curve of your wing. And I like the wings to cross over, fold over each other. It's just the way I like it. Now the last thing that you do Let's look at the face. Okay. This little smile here. Same way. I take and I clean that up. The beak I always polish with a, I shouldn't say polish, but I clean up with a, with a, with a flap disc. I clean it up real nice. Uh, the top, the bottom I don't use, the bottom I leave rough. I clean up the sides and then I take a sharpie usually a fine sharpie and I run right down the center of that because the beak's still straight at that point. I put that smile in there with a with a four and a half inch grinder with a, with a cutoff wheel. Once I get that done then I take we've already got the head bent, the neck bent I take and I heat up the end of the beak because I like it yeah, there we go. I like the beak to come and turn and then go back forward. And then usually, one way or the other, I'll tilt the, I'll tilt the head one way or the other. Uh, the slant of the head depends on what I, what I want, what I think. Uh, but basically, I just sit there and I look at it. I get, get it to where it sits good. I get it to where it sits fairly straight up and down this way when you're looking at it from the back. And I just I play with it until I get the I guess the uh, 
the, uh, the appearance or the emotion that I'm looking for. Okay? So, that's basically how I rough, how I do the, how I do the, the, the buzzards. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to, to contact me. So that's, that's how the buzzards are done. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, hope you learned something. I want to thank Tom Willoughby, first of all, for doing the demo years ago and showing me how to, to make these. And second of all, when I called him the other day, I want to thank him for giving me permission to go ahead and, and make a video showing how to make these buzzards. Uh, maybe I'm kind of funny about that, but I always like to give somebody credit. Uh, and Tom, as far as I know, is the one that came up with these. And I kind of felt funny about doing a video uh, if he was going to do one, but he, he assured me that he had no problem with me doing a video. So anyway, thanks Tom Willoughby. Uh, you're one hell of an artist, and I appreciate you letting me uh, do this video. So, um, y'all stay safe. We'll see you the next time we get out of here for a video.